One of the two right ones. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot the right one. On this hunt, I'm meeting up with longtime friend Remy Warren, one of the coolest, most genuine people I know, and also just happens to be one of the most badass hunters on the planet. One thing Remy and I have talked about for years but never done, hunt together. Until now. While I've logged some beach time, sucked down a few umbrella drinks, and engaged in typical tourist activities in the area, I've never pursued the unique animals that call this amazing landscape home. Primarily after access deer, wild pigs and feral goats are on the table figuratively, and if we're lucky, literally. Our mutual friend and island native, Robin, has been kind enough to open up his home as a base camp, as well as access to a few places for us to roam the rest of the week. Our first morning finds Remy, along with Robin's good buddy Sean, up and ready for our first day of hunting. We begin the hunt glassing from a ridgeline overlooking a broad valley. The foliage stands tall and appears as though it can hide an axis deer just about anywhere. I'm gonna make like a <sighs> sound like a real high pitch. I don't want to do it right now, but like a high pitch, like they call it screaming. So it's kind of like a scream, and then the, the females can make like a kind of like a cow oak sound. We spot a couple far off does, some feral goats on a distant ridge, and a rust colored pig, Remy immediately assigns the name Ginger Pig. Before long, Remy announces he's got a buck. It takes a few landmarks, but he talks me into the deer's location. With their white spots, you would think they would stand out. Not so. They blend in like they evolved along with everything else over eons. Not one to look a gift axe is in the mouth, and knowing if we're successful the hunt isn't over, the decision to make a play is an easy one for me. The buck browses around for quite some time before I get the shot I want. Which I promptly blow by shooting right over his back. Lucky for me, he spooks our way and I make my second shot count. Dude, thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. That was awesome. Holy mackerel. Now we got some work. We got some work and we got some meat. <laughs> Climb the big mountain. Dude, that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we had some pretty early and fast success this morning. It was awesome, it was amazing. We got that buck back to the truck, so we're heading back out. I think Remy and Sean are bow hunters at heart. They love bow hunting this place. This is a very unique hunt, and it's an any weapon hunt, so it's kind of, you know, uh, shooter's choice. And so we're gonna head back in and see if we can't get on some, some bucks, perhaps a, a pig or a goat with the bow. So those guys are heading down, and I think we will go catch up with them before we lose them. One thing I should mention, Remy is fresh off the second of two major wrist surgeries to repair an injury he suffered months prior. His entire right forearm is in a cast. How does he plan to draw his bow? Grit, adaptability, and a mouth tab he fashioned himself and grips with his teeth to pull back the string. Walking a few ridges over, Remy glasses up a buck bedded in a pocket of trees. We plan a stalk and sneak in.
Mike and I hang back the last little bit, but close enough we could still end up in the action if they come our way, while Coop and Remy creep in the remaining yards. There's a buck and a handful of does in the group. Remy isn't super interested in the buck. The does, however, are a completely different story. window picked me off. Ah, that's all right. It's getting a long wait for a doe, so I decided to move up a little bit. And I was going to get an angle on one of the bedded does. There's a couple in there, but one was sleeping. And when I got up a little bit, she picked her head up just as I was moving and then decided to stand up. We hunt into the afternoon for deer. Uneven info in that department, the weather and scenery are off the charts. Working our way back, we spot a group of goats in a stockable spot. Using the terrain, I slip into exactly 40 yards. The big one on the right is 42. Furthest right one if you got a shot on him. What? Yeah, one of the two right ones. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot the right one. I draw and execute what I think is a perfect quartering away shot on one of the big bellies. As he departs, I can see the arrow sticking out. In my mind's eye, I believe it must have stopped with impact on the Chill offside here. shoulder. We give the goat an hour before taking up the trail. Expecting him to be dead not far from where we last saw him, doubt about my shot's placement creeps in. Blood is limited and the terrain noisy, so Mike and Coop stay back while Remy and I track the goat. We find him bedded, the arrow sticking straight out of his onside shoulder. Not what you want. We catch up to him several more times, never getting an open shooting lane. Eventually, he makes it to the sheer shoreline cliffs. We have no recourse but to abandon pursuit. It's a bummer to say the least. I'm dejected, disappointed with myself, and sick about wounding the goat. Friends make the hunt, and our afternoon hunt just got better. Robin is able to slip away from work and join us. Remy and Mike head to one part of the property, Coop, Robin, and I to another. We find a sweet deadhead, spook a deer in thick brush, but don't see anything. Robin is dumbfounded by the lack of deer. The next day brings a new location. The jungle is an entirely different world. Even amidst an extended period of extreme drought, it's lush, green, and dense. In many areas, you can't see more than a few yards. Every step reveals opportunity. Uh, today I think we'll go up, we're just gonna kinda hunt a little bit different, like more jungle country. There's pigs in here, so we're kinda targeting pigs, but there's also a few deer. Okay. Um, you never know what you're gonna run into, but I thought this would be a good spot, kinda just still hunting, get up a lot of bushwhacking, uh, kinda climb the mountain and, and try checking these like creek bottoms and stuff, because in the middle of the day the pigs will start to go toward that water and find those thick spots to bed. So. Are there like as you go up in there like do you find like little creek bottoms as you go in? Or? Mm. Yeah there is a couple drainages there's like some it's like a pretty big canopy in there too so there's oh. like some wild guavas some mango trees in there. Okay. Uh, it's just the stuff the pigs like in this particular spot the pigs taste really good so that's why we're going to try to target one hopefully we can find one if not there might be some deer and if Worst case scenario, we'll have a pretty good hike up some steep country. So. Okay. <laughs> Go.
we jump a giant boar right off the bat. A good sign. Also a sign of the difficulty still hunting through dense jungle with four people presents. Guavas, a favorite food of the local pig population, are sprinkled throughout the jungle on our way up. A couple miles in, we get to the zone, an elevation Remy consistently encounters game. We decide to sit for a while, take a break, grab a snack, rehydrate, and let the jungle calm down to a point where it accepts our presence. Mid-bite, I catch movement to my left. Two small pigs are working their way down the ridge. I draw a couple times, but don't have a clear shot. Eventually, they take a hard right and pass right below me. Sweet, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, cut him up. We still got a little climbing to do, so. Yeah. Good thing he's not too big. <laughs> <laughs> Climber pig. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of barbecue. Yeah. That'd be perfect. Awesome. I'm pumped. With the mystery of the jungle calling us, we continue up the mountain. Remy in the lead, two black feral goats materialize out of thin air 20 yards up the hill. He motions for me to move up for a shot. Very kind, but it's obvious this is an opportunity for him. Great shot. Great shot. Dude, that was crazy. Nice work. Nice work. No mouth dab. Oh, mouth dab does it again. Dude, that was crazy. That was so cool. Look at that thing. Dang, that's big. It's a big goat. Back on the coast, we split up for the evening hunt. I head out to chase goats, Remy uses the opportunity of going solo to engage stealth mode on some Axis deer. In short order, Mike, Coop, and I are on a large group of goats with several good billies. I pick out a nice one, dial the yardage, and draw. Then I draw again, and again, and again. Each time, the island's notorious trade winds take my pins from one side of the goat to the other. Ultimately, I'm never comfortable loosing an arrow, and the goats move off. It's the right call. While I'm busy drawing and not shooting, Remy is living out his destiny. In a dramatic turn of events, he spotted Ginger Pig, abandoned the deer, and is executing a stalk. With this cast, I couldn't hold the phone while shooting. It was just too difficult. Like, I couldn't get a good grip on it. But I made a great shot. He should just be down over here in a matter of seconds. <laughs> that was awesome. Ginger pig. By the end of it, he's one hand butchering the pig with a dead phone and no headlamp well past sundown. To say Remy is one to not ask for help is an understatement. The next two days we hunt a different property. It's insanely dry and covered in lava flows. Lava rock is extremely difficult to walk on. Every step brings a level of ankle breaking uncertainty. Of note, on his first trip to Hawaii, Remy actually broke his ankle in some lava rocks on the first day. He also taped it tightly and kept hunting the rest of the week. All this to say, stalking conditions and Remy are tough to say the least. Remy has a couple close calls, including one on a big buck that sends him into what he likes to call an SOS, a shoes off situation. Ultimately, he never sends an arrow. 
I get on a couple deer, but I'm unable to close the deal. It's our final morning. We've come full circle to the ridge we started on the first day. The sun is well above the horizon when we spot two does working their way up the valley. 274. Are they walking away or toward? They're walking from right to left. Anxious to add some meat to our collective pot, the opportunity is welcome. I shoot the first one and pass my trusty 300 WSM over to Remy. In a not doctor recommended move, he shoulders the snappy rifle with his recently operated on, fully casted hand, and drops the second. It's the perfect end to our hunt and sets the table for a dinner none of us will forget. Awesome, Remy. We got a couple does down, which is kind of what we came out here for this morning. So There's no better eating than these does, so we'll just load them up, get back, and make a meal out of it. Dude, and I'm super excited. We've got Brian offered to cook us awesome. a meal. That's going to be good. Tomorrow. So I'm excited should be, about that. Pretty amazing. We got some surf and turf and uh, I'm looking forward to it. A little bit of everything from the island. Exactly. Just kind of a, a smorgasbord, a sampler, an island sampler. Awesome. So right cool. on. Cool. So, all right. Get these dudes out of here. Yeah, we'll pack these up. Get the other stuff. Another of Robin's buddies, famed chef Brian Etheridge, who I got to fish with along with his boat captain Chimo prior to Remy arriving, has graciously offered to display his talents featuring the fish we caught and the access deer procured. He's one of the best chefs in the country and a true culinary marvel. The dishes he prepared are mind-blowingly beautiful and pop with complex flavors perfectly complementing one another. We couldn't have wrapped this trip up any better. The word paradise gets thrown around casually. But after a week of good friends, hunting, fishing, amazing food, island life, and experiencing true aloha, Hawaii is paradise indeed.